a ball is placed on a wedge as shown in figure the wedge starts moving to the left which acceleration 2g tan theta what is the time taken to cover the distance here uh, from here to here what is the time distance uh, taken we need to find now see wedge means nothing but that is an inclined plane now our aim is to calculate the time taken the ball to cover from here to here so we need to calculate what is the value of t time taken okay when an object moving or rolling we are we will write that acceleration due to gravity is a is equal to g into sin theta okay the equation of motion equation is s is equal to ut plus half a t square now our aim is to calculate now what is the distance covered when a ball is here the initial velocity is equal to here now it is moving here and it comes here the length they denoted the length as an l when the ball comes from here to here what is the time taken we need to find so the initial velocity we took here the initial velocity as 0 so initial velocity 0 plus 1 by 2 and here a we know that when a object when an object is moving or rolling from uh, here inclined plane we will write the acceleration as g sin theta so here that is g sin theta square t square okay here s is nothing but here we are having s yes s is equal to that is also displacement only and here we are denoting the displacement as an L. So we can write S is equal to L. So I am going to write here L is equal to 1 by 2 G sin theta T square. Our aim is to calculate what is the T value. So T square is equal to 2L divided by G sin theta and t is equal to root of 2l divided by g sin theta so the time taken to cover the distance from here to here is root of 2l g sin theta so the option is here third one t is equal to root of 2l g sin theta two resistor of 3 ohm and 6 ohm are connected in parallel if the total current through the resistor is 15 ampere then the current through the resistor and the potential difference between the terminals we need to find now now they given the two resistor are connected in parallel so here the resistor this is r1 and it is connected in parallel so this is r2 they given the resistor uh, r1 as 3 ohm and R2 is equal to 6 ohm and potential difference is created here voltage so our aim is to calculate here the current through the resistor so we are having this is the current flowing I1 amount of current this is I2 amount of current flowing through the resistor so our aim is to calculate now I1 how much amount of current in the I2 path how much amount of current is causing as well as we need to find the potential difference across the terminals ok now we know that uh, according to Ohm's law V is equal to IR and here they are given the total current what is the total current total current is equal to total current is equal to 15 ampere 15 ampere this is the parallel circuit what is the formula for parallel circuit 1 by rp is equal to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 here we are having r1 resistance as 3 ohm so 1 by 3 plus r2 resistance is 6 ohm so 6 now this is of 3 by 6 and we can write this as a 
1 by 2. So, 1 by Rp is equal to resistance in parallel 1 by Rp is equal to 1 by 2. So, Rp is equal to 2 ohm. So, as a whole here we are going to take this part resistance as 2 ohm. Here we are having 2 ohm. Now, our aim is to calculate I1, I2 and voltage difference. We know V is equal to according to Ohm's law, V is equal to IR. V total, this is I total and this is R total. Now, I amount of total amount of current flowing in this uh, circuit is 15 ampere. So, 15 into resistance here as a total RP resistance is 2 ohm. So, 2. So, voltage, total voltage is 30 volt. So, we found out the total voltage that is a potential difference created between the parallel combinations. So, here we are having 30 volt, here also 30 volt. So, these two options get cancelled now. Our aim is to find now I1 as well as I2. Now, I1 according to Ohm's law, V is equal to, we know that V is equal to I into R. This is I1, this one is R1. I am going to find the I1 current flowing in this circuit now. So, I1 is equal to now V by R1. So, V here we got the total voltage is in 30 volt. So, 30 divided by the resistance R1 is 3 ohm. So, 3. Now, 10. So, I1 is equal to 10 ampere and we need to calculate I2 current now. I2 current, so V is equal to IR according to Ohm's law. This is I2 and I R2 this is. Now, I2 is equal to V by R2 total voltage we got here 30 and uh, resistance for R2 is 6 ohm. So, 6. Now, this is 2, 10 and 5. So, I2 is equal to 5 ampere. So, what is the correct option now? I1 current we got 10 ampere and I2 current we got 5 ampere. So, option 4 is the correct one. In NPN transistor, 95 percentage of emitted electron reaches the collector. If the base current they given us 2 milliampere, what is the collector current? We are there asking the collector current. So, here in the question they given that 95 percentage of emitted electron. So, emitted, if an electron is emitted means current flows in that circuit. So, I amount of current emitted electron. So, I E amount of current is flowing in that circuit now. Now, they given that 95 percentage of emitted electron, emitted electron reaches the reaches the collector now. So, collector current. So, this can be written as now 95 percentage of emitted electron that reaches the collector current. Okay. Now, this can be written 95 percentage. So, 95 divided by 100 I E is equal to I C. We know that That is current in the emitter is the sum of base current and collector current. From this equation our aim is to calculate the collector current. So, IC. What is IC? Now, from here we can calculate what is IC. IC is equal to IE minus IB. Okay, IC we found out here that is 95 divided by 100 into IE is equal to IE minus IB. Now, this can be written as IB is equal to IE minus 95 divided by 100 into IE. Now, here uh, taking IE common, so 1 minus 95 divided by 100 IE 
this is i b uh, i b is nothing but they given the uh, initial value of i b as i b is equal to 2 milli ampere so i b is nothing but 2 into milli so 10 power minus 3 ampere okay now this is 5 by 100 i e uh, 2 into 10 power minus 3 ampere 20 now this can be written as i e is equal to 40 into 10 power minus 3 ampere so 40 milli ampere we need to calculate the collector current we found out here what is i e emitter current now substitute uh, in this equation in this equation put this is equation number one substitute in this equation so i c is equal to i e value we got 40 milli ampere minus and i b value we know that i b is 2 milli ampere so 2 milli ampere from this we can write that is 38 milli ampere so the collector current is 38 milli ampere so the option is 2 38 milli ampere a molten ionic hydride on electrolysis gives dihydrogen at gas at cathode dihydrogen gas at anode h plus ion move towards cathode or h plus ion move towards anode first in solid state solid state these ionic hydrides are crystalline non volatile and not conducting but in a molten state molten state these ionic hydrates are they are conducting electricity electricity here they are asking molten ionic hydride on electrolysis so we have to construct a cell diagram is a anode here it is a cathode anode it is a cathode here that is a molten ionic hydrides that is nothing but H minus ions this cell the, elect, the reaction at cathode first the reaction at anode this molten ionic hydrides two molecules of molten ionic hydrides which liberate two electrons and hydrogen gas here these two electrons which is accepted by metal present in, metal ion present in cathode that is m2 plus it is a cathode reaction cathode reaction m2 plus which accepts this two electron which is deposited as metal so here they are asking uh, ionic molten ionic hydride on electrolysis gives dihydrogen gas at anode here there is a dihydrogen gas liberated at anode so the answer is option 2 in the free radical chlorination of methane the chain initiating step is 
first in the in general halogenation usually proceeds via free radical chain mechanism halogenation proceeds via free radical chain mechanism this free radical chain mechanism involves three steps one is initiation second one is propagation third one is termination here they are asking the chain initiating step in this chlorination of methane the chain initiating step is proceed by that is homolip homolysis of chlorine molecule cl2 this chain initiation is carried out by homolysis of chlorine molecule why chlorine molecule here cl cl bond is weaker when compared with weaker when compared with carbon carbon and carbon hydrogen bonds so we can break it easily so here the chain initiation step is homolysis of chlorine which gives a chlorine free radical the reaction is cl cl which breaks here that is an equal sharing of an electron in presence of light or heat homolysis cis we get a chlorine two chlorine free radicals so here the option 2 is correct formation of chlorine free radicals which of the following is the ortho and para directing group first we have to know what is a ortho and para directing groups a groups are atoms which directing the incoming group to ortho and para position that is called a ortho and para directing group here they are giving a ketone group a cyane group nitro group and amino group here in the case of keto group c double bond o or here there is a double bond present here this double bond is unstable so it pulls the electron from benzene ring so this bond is shifted here this this is shifted here so the resonance corresponding resonance structure is o minus here there is an electron deficiency then the next step the bond is shifted here then the next step is here there is an electron deficiency c or o minus sorry c double bond o minus In the next step the bond is shifting here then this bond is also shifting here this also shifting here so in the case in the case of keto group the electron deficiency at ortho and para position this is not sufficient for electrophilic substitution because electrophilic substitution takes place only in a electron rich rich places so here there is an electron deficiency at ortho and para position so in keto group there is not an ortho and para group in the case of cyanide also 
here also there is a C triple bond N. It is also unstable. So, it also pulls the electron from the benzene ring. In nitro N double bond O, O minus, here also there is an un unsaturation. So, it also pulls the electron from the benzene ring. So, it is not a ortho and para directing group. But in the case of amine, N H2. Here there is a lone pair. This lone pair will shifted to here and this bond, this electron is shifted here. So, the corresponding resonance structure is minus a double bond, double bond N H2. Then this electron, this negative electron goes to here and this bond is shifted here. In the, so, in the case of amine, the electrons rich in ortho and para position. This is a suitable condition for electrophilic substitution. So, here the electron rich in ortho and para position. This is a ortho and para directing group among these four. So, option four is correct. Which among the following microbes facilitates the absorption of phosphorus from soil by plants? So, considering the given options, Nostac, Azola and Rhizobium. They are all involved in nitrogen fixation. And the remaining glomus helps in absorbing phosphorus from the soil and it helps plants to use, utilize the phosphorus present in soil. See the picture carefully and choose the DNA which is undigested by restriction endonuclease. So, the, here they have given a diagram of gel on which DNA has been electrophorist, isn't it? So, the, what is the basic principle behind the gel electrophoresis is whenever a huge DNA is cut into fragments, the smaller fragments will run faster, isn't it? Since they are very small, it is easy for them to travel further. So, here there are a lot of fragments present. In question, they have asked undigested. So, this would be the correct option where the DNA is not digested. You can't see any fragments here, isn't it? So, the right answer is lane 1. Protein encoded by the gene Cry1AB helps to control cotton ballworm, brinjal fruit borer, corn borer, and army worm. So, we know that cry genes are present in Bacillus thuringiensis, isn't it? They are widely used to produce disease resistant plant. Here they are specifically given cry 1 AB. So, cry 1 AB provides resistance against corn border. Whereas for cotton bollworm, it is cry 1 a, C. The right answer is third option. The dorsal portion of midbrain has four round lobes called as. So, they are asking the dorsal portion of midbrain has four round lobes which are called as. So, the options are corpus callosum, cerebral aqueduct, cranial meninges, corpora, quadrigemina. The correct answer is option four, corpora, quadrigemina. So, coming to the diagram, this is the diagram of the right hemisphere of brain where we can see. So, this is the midbrain region. So, this is the forebrain, the midbrain and the hindbrain. In the midbrain, this is the dorsal portion which is called, which is also called as tectum region. So, it consists of four round bodies which are called as 
Corpora quadrigemina. Quadri means four. Okay. They are also called as colliculi, which are divided into superior colliculi and inferior colliculi. So the main function of corpora quadrigemina is they act as reflex centers for hearing and vision. So the dorsal portion of midbrain has four round bodies called as corpora quadrigemina. Coming to other options, corpus callosum. This is a tract of nerve fibers which connects the right hemisphere with the left hemisphere. So corpus callosum are tract of nerve fibers which connects the two hemispheres. Next cerebral aqueduct. Cerebral aqueduct is a duct. It is a canal. Okay. This canal is present in the midbrain region and it allows the flow of cerebrospinal fluid from third ventricle to fourth ventricle. So it allows the entry of CSF into fourth ventricle. So it is present in the midbrain region and cranial meninges the last option cranial meninges they are nothing but the covering of the outer coverings of the brain. So we know that brain has three coverings outer dura, middle arachnoid and inner pia mater. So they are collectively called as cranial meninges. For this question the answer will be option 4 corpora quadrigemina. Statement 1 modern homo sapiens arose 1.5 million years ago. Statement 2 homo sapiens were the first human like beings evolved. So here we have to find out which of the statements are correct and wrong. First statement modern homo sapiens arose 1.5 million years ago. This is wrong because the modern homo sapiens are arose about 75,000 to 10,000 years, years ago. So the first statement is wrong. Statement 2. The homo sapiens were the first human like beings. This statement is also wrong because homo habilis were the first human like beings. So both the statements are incorrect. So option 2 is the correct answer where both 1 and 2 are incorrect. So here we can see the stages of evolution in humans. So first comes the primates who evolved 15 million years ago followed by Australopithecus who used stones as weapons and followed by Homo habilis. So they were the first human like beings. Okay. So Homo habilis were the first human like beings followed by Homo erects the upright humans. Okay. Their body is upright. So hence they call us Homo erectus followed by the Neanderthals and finally we have the modern Homo sapiens who evolved about 10,000 to 75,000 years ago. So these the, this is the stage of human evolution have given the time period. So we can see that the Homo habilis and Homo erectus evolved 1.5 million years ago and the Homo sapiens evolved about 10,000 to 75,000 years ago. Thus, hence this, for this question the answer will be both 1 and 2 are incorrect. The ideal contraceptive method for the females who want to delay pregnancy is. So the question is the ideal contraceptive method for females who want to delay pregnancy is. They are asking the ideal contraceptive method. The options are cervical caps, periodic abstinence, copper tree and sahili. So the correct answer will be option 3, copper tree. This is the ideal form. So coming to first option cervical cap, cervical cap is a type of barrier method. So it prevents the entry of sperms into the uterus. So it covers the cervical region and prevents the entry of sperm. So this is a type of barrier method. Coming to periodic abstinence. So here it is, a it is a type of natural method of contraception where the coitus is prevented from 10 to 17 days. 
during the time of ovulation in order to avoid pregnancy. So, this is a type of natural method. Sahili it is a type of oral contraceptive pill. So, it is a once a week pill and it comes under contraceptive pills. And copper tea it is a type of intrauterine device. So, here we can see the effectiveness of these types of contraception among which the IUDs have more effect, they are more effective in compared to that of other methods. So, they are 99 percentage effective when compared to that of pills, natural methods and barrier methods. That is why intrauterine devices are the most effective method which is also followed in India. So, for this question the answer will be option 3 copper tea because they are the ideal method of contraception to delay pregnancy in women.